some Oreos. Yes. Okay then. The film that you just watched, in addition to being pretty silly and a lot of fun to shoot, uh, was filmed on a Samsung Galaxy S9 using a Moment Anamorphic Lens. Um, big thanks to my wife, Steph, uh, for getting me a very, very early Christmas gift in the form of this. Your Nintendo Switch is on the way. So, what is the Moment Anamorphic Lens? Well, anamorphic lenses, in general, uh, take your video, take your normal field of view, uh, and they have a, a cylindrical lens that actually ends up pulling light more from the sides. I can show a little bit on here if I just kind of hold this up to the lens. You notice that my face is now squished um, because it is actually pulling in more from the sides, squishing it into the middle. Um, and what this ends up doing is first off giving you a much wider field of view. An anamorphic field of view is what we uh, associate with being cinematic. It's got that nice wide field of view and it has uh, some other features such as uh, the, the type of distortion. It just Having a, a, a wide look like that, um, you can take your 1080p video and crop it down like this, but it's not going to be quite the same as slapping on a wider anamorphic lens. Another thing it does, and that is what everybody who's looking into getting an anamorphic lens is looking for, is the lens flares. The very distinctive horizontal streaked flares that come off of uh, sharp light sources in your scene. Um, B-roll that you're seeing today was all filmed yesterday in Saratoga Springs, uh, mostly on my lunch, and then again when I left at night. Um, I got this on Wednesday, and Thursday I kind of put it through its paces by uh, taking it, filming during my lunch break, filming again after I got out of work, and then inviting Dave over to do that short caper film I don't know if I'd call it a heist so much, but uh, yeah. So with that experience, here is my initial thoughts on the Moment Anamorphic Lens as well as the Moment Camera Pro app that I used to film it. I'm going to double check the name of that app. Moment Pro Camera. The Anamorphic Lens and Moment Pro Camera for Android running on a Samsung Galaxy S9. And we're going to start the review with the lens itself, which I have basically nothing negative to say. Um, it's gorgeous. It is solidly constructed. Um, it gets beautiful video. Uh, I'm so happy with some of the shots that I was able to get out of it. It comes with a front lens cap with the Moment logo on it, as well as a bag that is labeled anamorphic 1.33 uh, for the lens itself. And it's good that it comes with the bag because it does not come with a rear lens cap. That is my only quibble with the lens itself. It doesn't come with a rear lens cap. They sell it separately, but it should really be included. Um, I'm happy with the video. The flares are gorgeous. Just like I never could have imagined that I could get video that gorgeous on my phone. Like, yes, it certainly is acceptable enough uh, visual quality for me to have done all of the carnival vlogs with that and many other vlogs that I've done on my phone, but then to put this lens on it just feels so nice, looks so gorgeous. I'm really happy with the lens. In order to mount the lens, you need to get a Moment phone case for your phone. So if you already have another case, you are going to need to remove that in order to put this on there. I prefer my phone naked, except for the Sharkagachi sticker on here from Bite Size Treasure. Plug there. Um, it is made, the case is made of a hard rubber, goes on very easily, and then the lens mounts onto the phone very easily as well. 
Um, it worries me a little bit when the case is like just rubber. There doesn't seem to be any sort of reinforcement at the lens mounting point. So I worry a little bit at the longevity of the mount. But you line up the line on the back of the lens right here with a line on the side of the case. Rotate. And now you have a lens, an anamorphic lens, on your phone. And actually, I kind of like the shape of the lens, too. I was walking around holding it like this, actually, um, just flat along the top and bottom as I was filming. So that works really well, too. Uh, but much as the lens itself lacks a rear lens cap, the case should have a body cap, and it does not, and that is not something that's for sale. Uh, when you have a DSLR with removable lenses, when, you're, when you don't have any lenses mounted to it, you have a body cap on there to keep dust from getting in. I put my phone in my pocket. So I take off the lens, it goes in my pocket, I pull it out a couple hours later ready to film, and it is just covered with lint on there. So I need to remove the case to de-lint my phone's built-in camera lens before I then go in and mount the anamorphic lens. So that's another frustration. Um, I am probably going to keep my phone uncased until such point as I want to shoot with this lens. It's small, it's somewhat easy to carry around, but I don't carry a purse or much of a bag to keep things in, so I don't see myself having this lens on me unless I am specifically going out to shoot with it. So I will simply keep it with the case and keep the phone unmounted from said case. Um, and now we're going to get into some of the contentious bits. Uh, so you can film using the built-in camera app on your phone. Um, however, it is going to be squished uh, because again, it is taking uh, a wider field of view and compressing it down to your sensor size. Let's say 1080p. Uh, my phone can shoot 4K, but I was just shooting in 1080 because that's what my computer can handle. That's what this camera's doing. It's what I'm used to. So let's say uh, it's compressing down to uh, 1920 by 1080. Um, what the lens does is it's grabbing from further out here and squishing it in. So if you just look at the video without having processed it, it is going to be squished. It's going to look tall um, rather than wide uh, because of everything squished in like that. Uh, and you would need to de-squeeze it later on. Uh, when I go into Premiere, I go to Interpret Footage and 1.33 Anamorphic HD, uh, with the equivalent being a square pixel size of 2560 by 1080. Now, the Moment app, uh, when you tell it that you are using an anamorphic lens, it says, oh, well, I'm using that. I'm going to apply that de-squeeze immediately. So in the viewfinder, you're able to see properly. And when you're shooting photos, you are able to see properly with everything 100% corrected. When you're shooting video in the Moment Camera Pro, Moment Pro Camera app, it isn't fully de-squeezed. Like, the aspect ratio is right, but if you take the camera and start to turn it from side to side, it's just there's some very weird, squishy things going on. So it's not fully doing it in real time. Uh, but the final videos are properly displayed. Um, you can tell the app to export your final videos de-squeezed, in which case it will export a 2560 by 1080 video square pixels. Or you can tell it, don't bother, I'll take care of it myself, in which case it exports a 1920 by 1080 that you then have to go and de-squeeze in Premiere. I'm going to do that because of file size concerns. Um, like, it's basically, it's that, that's what the app is doing anyway. It's recording to a 1920 by 1080 file. There's an issue with taking photos where it is very late on actually taking the photo after you hit the shutter button. Uh, I went out in the morning and took pictures of my dogs in the backyard. I had a wonderful shot of Katusha lined up closer to the camera, but when I hit the shutter, 
It was so long between hitting the shutter, where she was lined up and looking at her brother Ronan, and actually triggering that you can see her jumping into about to start playing some more. I like taking photos on the app and not having to de-squeeze later because it will save de-squeezed, and I don't have to worry about messing around with that. I can share straight to Facebook from my phone. That's fine, but video I'm always going to want to edit, so just don't bother de-squeezing that. A bigger issue with the Moment Pro camera app is that it is very unstable. In the course of shooting yesterday, now fortunately not while we were doing the film last night, except right at the start, uh, before we shot anything, um, the, the app would crash. If I left the app and came back in, it would usually show me a black screen, and I would have to close the app, try to reopen it, still be a black screen, close it again, try to reopen it, say, oops, it, it, it would come up with a dialogue saying, oops, it crashed, do you want to force stop? I would say, yes, of course I'd like to force stop the app. Um, and then I could open it as normal. One time, it never gave me the option, and I had to open my settings menu, go to apps, find the app, click it, and manually force stop it. Fortunately, if it does this at the end of filming a video, it does save the video, but I was very concerned, because a couple times I'm like, I don't know if I got that shot, and I ended up getting like a duplicate afterward. Another issue I ran into is that because of the app's instability, I was reluctant to close it. And that means that while I was walking between locations for the shots that I wanted to get, the app was still open, the screen was still on, the battery was still being drained. The app is something of a memory hog, even compared to the stock photo app, which throws the screen brightness onto full, which the Moment Pro Camera app does not. Uh, it seemed like it was draining a battery very quickly. Uh, so that was definitely a concern, and I just barely got the last shot of the night that I wanted, and then my phone died, so I wasn't even able to review it. Uh, occasionally, I, when I have the phone open, I would pull from the left just to bring down my status bar so I could see what my battery was at. And sometimes when I did that, I would hit the... Uh, button to change the resolution accidentally, which just hit that a few more times and get back to the resolution that I want to shoot in. Or I would pull down the menu for what lens I was using, because it does the de-squeezing when you select anamorphic and perhaps does other things for other lenses as well. And that menu is nigh on impossible to close. I eventually would just select a different lens and then switch back to anamorphic, and that is just poor design. I should be able to hit the button that opened the menu or just select anamorphic again. Little quality of life things that just get you more and more frustrated at the app. Another feature that the Moment Pro Camera app has is some of the more professional things like focus peaking and zebra stripes for over and under exposure. I ended up turning all these off halfway through my Saratoga stroll because focus peaking makes very little sense when shooting on a smartphone. You are either really close or you're not. I will say again, you are either really close where something is out of focus while everything else is in focus or this is in focus and everything else is out or Everything is really far away. If I shoot from here, every single thing in this room is in focus, as would probably be my neighbor's house across the road if the exposure allowed for all that at the same time. Um, If you are doing a near shot, by all means, go on, turn on focus peaking and check it out. But honestly, you can eyeball it on the screen and be fine because anything that close, you're going to be able to make out enough detail. And as for the zebra stripes for exposure... Um, I always prefer to have zebras on for 100 and zero. Um, it don't, sh- don't zebra out a sky unless it is 100% white and unrecoverable. If it is just bright, but there's still definition in there, leave it alone. Uh, a couple times while shooting, I took a shot that I loved and fortunately I had recorded it and I came back, uh, and really liked it, but I was told that that was overexposed Uh, and or underexposed actually Uh, I was shown black spots uh, all over the ground where I wanted to catch detail of the mist coming off of the water so I upped my exposure and sure enough that's fine but the sky is not 
they're good features to have, but uh, I wish that I could specify just a little more what I wanted out of it. Um, while using the A99 Mark II earlier this year on a couple of shoots, I was able to say, uh, set my uh, zebra, my overexposed zebra level at 100, or at 90, or at 85. And this kind of thing is good for exposure for making sure that a face is well exposed, perhaps, because you want a face to be at that 80, 85 mark. And if you're seeing zebras on that, then yes, by all means, change it. But for shooting landscapes and things like that, don't. Like, I, I only want to know if something is so bright that it's white or so dark that it's black and unrecoverable. That's all I'm looking for because I can adjust everything after. Unfortunately, the built-in camera app, in addition to not using a viewfinder that de-squeezes to about 80% like the Moment app does during video, um, I cannot manually set exposure settings for video. I can for photo, I can set my ISO and shutter speed and white balance and everything like that, but I cannot do that in video mode on the Samsung Galaxy S9 at time of recording, which is November 2019. So I need to use the Moment app in order to get those manual controls. Um, and it's unfortunate that I have to use buggy software in order to do that. That said, there is an app called Filmic Pro that is a $15 purchase that I will be looking into, but I figured I'd keep this to the Moment stuff for now. By the way, the Moment app is $3.99, uh, and it says on their website that with the purchase of an anamorphic lens, you get a credit for their app of $5.99. Where's that extra two bucks coming or going? But I didn't have to worry about that because staff who bought it never got a code, was never told, hey, go here to redeem your code. It's just it didn't actually happen. You're supposed to get a free copy of the app with the lens it didn't happen so that's frustrating um, so I, I use manual controls and it shows the limitations of using a phone for this kind of thing with a DSLR you have three exposure controls you have shutter speed which you always want to keep constant uh, if I'm shooting at 24 frames a second which I just realized all of this was shot at 24 and I'm shooting this at 60 well, I'll deal with it. Um, shutter speed should always be constant. If you're shooting at 24, you want your shutter speed to be 48, a 148th. Um, if you don't know why, look it up. Um, and then you have aperture and ISO. A phone has a fixed aperture. There is no physical mechanism for letting in less or more light. So... Let's say you're, you're at your base of 100 ISO. What I like to do is set, on a DSLR, I'll set 100 ISO and the lowest possible f-stop. Um, then if I need things to be darker, I will stop down the lens. So instead of 2.8, maybe we'll go to 4, 5, 6, 8, something like that until it's dark enough. Um, and if it's not bright enough, then I will bring up the ISO. And at night... Bringing up the ISO works fine, although um, I was shooting at 2000 ISO at the start, uh, 400 by the end and it wasn't bad, but like in the backyard I was at 2000 or 1600 and that's not a good ISO for a phone, it's grainy. Uh, for a photo it's fine because you can extend the shutter speed, but you can only do that so much. Uh, I was shooting at 124th shutter, uh, basically 360 degree shutter, and the results aren't as ideal as they could be, so I would have needed to bring in a lot more light in order to get the proper exposure for that. In the daytime, it's worse, because once the ISO is down to 50, the lowest it goes, the only way to get things darker is by increasing the shutter speed. When you get traffic moving across frame and you don't have any blurring on the wheels, you just have that weird wagon wheel thing going on, uh, when you are shooting water gushing out of one of the springs in Saratoga and there's no continuity between frames it's just like gushing and splattering and it's not good with motion blur 
these shortcomings are seen. So that's not a shortcoming with the lens. That is just uh, an artifact of shooting video on a phone. It's something that comes up. Uh, that said, Moment does sell an adapter to put filters in front of the lenses. And that can be very handy for stopping down exposure and still keeping a semblance of natural motion blur. Uh, of course, the filter is, I believe, a 63 millimeter uh, filter adapter. Uh, again, that is for this lens. And there are other lenses. They have other, they, Moment sells other lenses. They have a super wide, they have telephoto, stuff like that. But basically, they have, for this lens, a huge old adapter ring, something like that. For comparison's sake, this 50 millimeter prime has a 49 millimeter filter thread. So a f nearly a full 15 millimeters bigger than that for these. Okay, still the p uh, potential to pop a filter onto your lens is appreciated and probably something that I will be investing in if I plan on using this more, which I absolutely do. For all of the shortcomings of the lens cap, body cap, or the lack thereof in both cases, um, the stable app, lack thereof, uh, the proper de-squeezing during uh, recording, lack thereof. For all of those shortcomings, I love this lens. I, I really like the look that I was getting out of it, and not just the flares. Yes, the flares are gorgeous but I was also getting some really cool stuff during the daytime as well. Um, and it was just a really good time. So I will be doing more with this lens and I may try to shoot more than just that silly little film on it. I will be trying to come up with points where it makes sense to be using a fixed focal length anamorphic lens for films in the future. Uh, because it is a neat toy to be able to play with, and uh, it deserves pushing its boundaries. Uh, I'm having fun with it. So, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please give me the old thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. I typically don't do gear reviews, but I've certainly been doing a lot of different things on this channel in addition to my usual Let's Plays. So, subscribe, see what's there. Um, if you want to support this and other weird endeavors, you can support me over at patreon.com slash boaterbug and ko-fi.com slash boaterbug. And you can always follow at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.com slash boaterbug to see videos as they come out uh, and other news items. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one. And whether it is in this aspect ratio or something a little more squishy, I will see you next time.